I was 10 years old, my mom and dad said, you were kidnapped from the hospital. The FBI found you a couple years later. In 1964, a one-day-old baby named Paul Joseph Franzak was kidnapped from a Chicago hospital, capturing the attention of the nation. The story began on April 26, when Paul's mother, Dara Franzak, gave birth to him at a hospital in Chicago. The following morning, a woman, disguised as a nurse, took him from his mother's room for a checkup and never returned. The woman said to her, the doctor wants to see your baby. And she said, oh, okay, and handed the baby to her. The hospital launched a frantic search, and it triggered the largest manhunt in Chicago's history, but the baby remained missing. Do you have any reason to think why she might have taken the baby? The only thing I can think of, she must have been desperate for a baby that she would come and take someone else's baby away from them. Then, two years later, in March 1966, Dora and Chester Fronzak received a letter from the FBI, informing them that a toddler matching their son's description had been found in Newark, New Jersey. The boy had been abandoned in a shopping center and was placed with a foster family before the police suspected he might be a missing baby. After conducting tests comparing the abandoned boy's photograph with the one taken on the day of Paul's birth, the authorities concluded that this abandoned baby could be baby Paul. Filled with hope, Dora and Chester went to meet the boy, officially known as Scott McKinley, in New Jersey. They positively identified him as their son. Scott, now known as Paul, was taken to Chicago and was reunited with his parents. As the years went by, Paul always felt like he didn't fit in. His interests, appearance, and personality differed from his parents and younger brother. As Paul got older, he started having more doubts and wanted to investigate things further. My brother looks exactly like my dad. Exactly. I don't. So in 2012, he bought some DNA kits and also convinced his parents to take a DNA test. The results came back, revealing that he was not their biological son. In my heart, I really knew that I probably wasn't their real child. Devastated and feeling lost, Paul reached out to an investigative journalist who helped him go public with his story, leading him to the reopening of the Paul Franzak kidnapping case. Through the assistance of volunteer genealogists and DNA testing, Paul was able to uncover a remarkable revelation about his true identity. He was a missing child and his biological name was Jack Rosenthal, and even more astonishingly, he had a twin sister named Jill. But there's more. Jack and his twin sister Jill mysteriously vanished without a trace in 1965. Following this revelation, Paul had the opportunity to meet his biological relatives who share details about their childhood parents and the circumstances surrounding their disappearance. Everything I've heard from other members of my family pretty much made it clear to me that me and my twin sister Jill were abused. Family members recounted seeing him and Jill's children, but suddenly losing contact with them. Gilbert and Mary Rosenthal, his biological parents, would offer excuses to explain their absence during family gatherings. Ultimately, I was abandoned, and if she wasn't murdered by them, then she's still out there. Gilbert, who returned from the Korean War with PTSD, struggled with the condition, while Mary battled serious alcoholism. Sadly, both Gilbert and Mary passed away from cancer in the 1990s. Franzak believes that Jill may have suffered a tragic fate or possibly been killed, which led their parents to abandon him since they couldn't explain the presence of only one twin. Nevertheless, Paul maintains hope that Jill might still be alive. The quest for Jill, is it's on. It's, it's, it's ongoing and I'm not gonna stop till we find her. To aid the search, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children created a composite reconstruction image depicting what Jill might look like if she is indeed alive. The investigation into Jill's disappearance remains ongoing. Upon the revelation of this information, the FBI reopened Paul Franzak's case. If I don't do everything I can to help find the real child, then I'm not doing my job as a son. Don't you also want to find out who you are? It'd be a great bonus. In 2019, it was reported that a man living in rural Michigan who had gone by the name Kevin Beatty for his entire life was identified as the real Paul Franzak through genetic genealogy. Kevin passed away from cancer in 2020. Prior to his passing, he had several phone conversations with his mother, Dora Franzak, but they were never able to arrange a face-to-face -face meeting. My mom, she actually had two Pauls. She raised me as Paul. She got to actually speak with the real Paul. To this day, the individual responsible for kidnapping him has not been identified. The FBI continues to investigate the kidnapping case and it remains an ongoing investigation.